Welcome to Firm Foundation. In these times of shifting standards and faulty foundations, there is a solid place on which to build a victorious life. And that place is the firm foundation of Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Your host for Firm Foundation is Brian Hudson, a Bible teacher, pastor, author, and producer of Life Enriching Media. Today, we're going to talk about it is done. Say, it is done. Jesus rose, you can stand. Say, Jesus rose, rose. I can stand. stand. Amen. It is done. Let's go to our first scripture, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, where the apostle Paul wrote and said, that I may know him, know Jesus, and the power of his resurrection. I want to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. I gave the ministers the assignment to talk to you about the power of resurrection. They did that. And so understand that knowing him, that's the relational dimension. And if you will, the transactional part is the power. So we have the knowledge of him, relationship with him, but we also have the tools and the means to do what he wants done. It's good to know people. But it's good to also walk in the benefits of relationship. It's good to to have that degree. uh, You know, you you finish school, you got, but to have the job and to use those skills in your career, right? That's the power part. So knowing is good. They're both important. He said, know him and, and know the power of his resurrection. Last week, I woke up. With the words in my mind, it is done. It is done. But these words are from God in my spirit, in my mind. And I wrote those words down. And I first thought that these were the words of Jesus. But he didn't say it is done. He said it is finished. There's an important difference I want you to see today because There's a reason why I heard the words, it is done from God. And we'll talk about that here on today. John 19, Gospel John chapter 19, verse 28. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. Now this is after this, after his passion, after after, uh, the scourging before uh, Pilate and all the, you know, the, the suffering on the Via Della Rosa and all he went through. All of that uh, suffering, it came to the point that now on the cross, hanging on the cross, knowing that all things were now fulfilled or accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with the sour wine, put it on a hyssop, on a stick, And put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. So when I heard the words, it is done, I thought that was, well, it was the title to my sermon. I knew that. But I thought it was the words of Jesus But again, his words were, it is finished. And the distinction is important for lots of reasons. Let's first ask ask these two questions. He said, it is finished. Well, what was finished? And what did it mean that he finished? What I learned, this is, any dictionary will show you this, that the word done is an adjective. An adjective is a word that describes or modifies. So it's a red dress. It's a blue car. It's a hot day. He's angry, right? So done describes. Done modifies. Done speaks to arriving at or brought to an end. But Jesus was not just done. He was finished. Here's an important distinction. 
as it's used here, the word finished, it is finished, that's a verb. It's an action word. It's something that's being done. And the Greek word finished, it means to bring to an end, to carry out a thing to the full. Done just describes the thing. But finish is the thing being completed and brought to its end. And that's important because in life, we're into doing things and saying things are done, but sometimes we don't understand the whole process. We don't understand that there's often more to what God wants from us than what we are saying or doing or describing. And this thought came from the text and looking back over what Jesus did in his min earthly ministry, but then going back before he came through the virgin birth, looking back over the Old Testament, all the sacrifices, all the animals slain, all the blood put on the altar day after day, year after year, thousands and thousands of animals and sacrifices. But they could never say, it is finished. And what I realized as well is, as I considered those words, it is done, I thought about the example. For example, all of us have been to school, uh, whether high school, college, some special training. I thought about uh, last year I completed a doctor of ministry, and, and I, you know, it took a long time. But in the last two years, I just got into it, you know, got into it and got it done. You know, before you finish something, You've done a lesson, you've done a test, an assessment, an ass, you know, a lab, exam, a lab uh, experiment or whatever it is. And, and so, but, but it's never finished, you know, and it's always one more thing, one more assignment, one more book to read, one more experiment. So when I finished this last degree, and uh, you know, it, was, it was online, and I sent, I sent all the work in, and and, uh, and I hit send, and I, I sat back, and I, I was thinking, about, okay, what's now? Okay, what do I got to do next? I got to see. What, what book? Uh, well, you know, what paper I have to write? How many pages is this paper going to be? Uh, I, you know, I got to find all the, get all the background source material. And I, I don't, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. I finished. But I kept looking for something to do. I kept, I was in the mode of doing and doing, and I realized when it's finished, you're done. Here's the next slide. So here it is. We can say it is done because Jesus said it is finished. Say that. I can say it is done because Jesus said it is finished. Jesus brought everything to the full. He completed. He, he, com the whole process going back from the days of Israel and the, way back to Abraham and, and Moses, all the, you know, all the people who came before and all the priests, Aaron, and all the work, the temple, the inner court and the outer court, and the most, all that. And all they represented. It had a very important purpose and meaning, but those things never finished the work. They never finished the redemption. They never finished salvation for us. Now I'm going to give you three points. Talking about what Jesus finished. First of all, Jesus finished the endless cycle of Jewish sacrifices. And when I say cycle, I mean cycle. Because if you've read the Old Testament, you know there were annual uh, feasts, several per year, detailed instructions given to the people, ways in which they were to pre present offerings to God, you know, uh, bring, uh, have salt with your offerings, and all kind of things. And that was important because it, it helped them understand you need help. You need so much help, do this every day. You need so much help to be in a mindset 
of, of recognizing you need so much help. Do this every day, every month, every year, even though it won't change you or fulfill you, I want you to get ready for the one I'm going to bring who will finish. You know, sometime in our, in our classwork, as educators, you know this, you give students assignments. You don't intend for them to finish it. You want them to, to get into the mindset of working on projects and assignments, getting good study habits. So, so you, you give them things to do. They're learning, but they're also developing the habits. They need to be good students. Well, Jesus, or God, did that with Israel. In fact, it, um, Galatians says that the law was like a schoolmaster, see, a schoolmaster or a tutor to bring them to Christ. So then in our lives, you'll observe that there are things that God wants you to do because you're on the path of finishing in whatever it is, in your marriage and finances. I'm, I realized, I looked up a couple of months ago and realized that I had paid off all my debts. Now they have a lot. Now that all my debt sounds bad. I had a couple of big ones, okay, but paid the thing off, and I had actually a lot of bad payment. I had it set to pay a, a large amount every month. It just went there every month, and one day the thing came back and said zero balance, and I realized, oh, that's finished, right? So you know, ideas we we agonize over finance sometime and and robbing Peter to pay Paul, you know what I'm saying, knock him in the head to give him, give him some. <laughs> Going to consolidate, get a credit card, to pay that credit card, all this kind of stuff. All that stuff. But I'm finished. And now it looked like I got a raise. Amen. feel like I got a raise, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... Understand these, these two terms, it's, it's done. We want to be done, but we can't be done until a process is finished. So don't ever lose sight of the process. Now, of course, where salvation is concerned, the most important process is all that what Jesus did. We, there's no process for us saving ourselves, no process. It's all about Jesus. We receive. But there is the important part that once we receive him, is then to walk in relationship with him and to remain, not just stay safe, but remain strong in your faith and encouraged and continue, as, as the Apostle Paul said, to fight the good fight of faith. Look at Hebrews chapter 7. Talk about this point, how Jesus finished that endless cycle. Hebrews 7, 26 says, For such a high priest, that's Jesus, was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens, who does not need daily as those high priests, small h, small p, to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's sins. But Jesus did once for all. He did for this, he did once for all. Offered up himself. That's an amazing statement. And it's a major paradigm shift. That's why they struggled with it. The thing about, the thing about doing religion is it's, it's habit forming. It's somewhat satisfying. Because when you do religious things, uh, you feel like you've done something. Right? You know, but sometimes religion is, is exactly like running a treadmill. You're just running, but you ain't going nowhere. I mean, you, you, know, you, you, you know, I've gone a mile. It's, it's a mile. Well, okay, I know what you mean, but you haven't gone a mile, right? So religion just has you on a treadmill, and you feel satisfied. I've, I've gone someplace. Now, listen, I'm not denigrating discipline and and, you know, praying every day, read the Bible every day. The key, though, is what we do as Christ followers that's different from mere religion is 
We actually decide to do something. And we think about it. And we put our faith in it. And we're creative with it sometimes. Because if I just prayed the same exact prayer every single day, I can do that in my sleep. Right? So I want to pray every day. That's the good part. But I want to exercise my faith and recognize that in my pr- I'm not praying to gain God's favor. I'm not praying for God to like me. Jesus finished. So I don't pray to get more from God. It's, I say it's done. When I pray for something and believe God, it's done. Because Jesus finished the work. We act like sometimes we pray and, and fret so much and worry so much about the thing we just prayed about. You have to wonder sometimes, you know, who was I praying to? Who, who do I believe heard that prayer? What's the power of the person who heard my prayer? You know, there are people in life. You go to them for some advice or for some help on something, and there are some people you know, if you ask them a question, whatever they tell you, you're good. It's good because it's the reliability of the person. They have finished whatever has given them the ability to counsel you. I always tell you, watch out for these financial advisors. They want to work with you. Well, first question, are you rich? Second question, show me your portfolio. Because, or are you trying to get rich off me? I can't make you rich. So, so have you finished your own journey of investments and finance and squaring away all those issues so that when I come to you, I have the confidence you can actually help me. Because I'm not finished. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be done. I need someone who's finished to get me to a place where I'm done. Amen. So apply it everywhere if you want. But Jesus said, or the Hebrews writer said, that the priest, the earthly priest, had to offer these sacrifices daily for themselves and then for the people. But Jesus offered himself once. The main thing about Jesus was the reason he's called the Lamb of God and he's called the priest is because he, he was the offering, and he offered himself, right? He was the perfect lamb of God, spotless, no blemish. So he was qualified, virgin born, sinless. And so Jesus then, when he died, when he, was, when he died and was crucified and buried and was risen, uh, one, of the, one of the disciples saw him, uh, and said to him, you know, Jesus, or one of, the, one of the women, and he said, don't touch me. I haven't ascended to the Father. I haven't ascended to the Father, which we interpret to mean in that tradition that he hadn't offered himself on the heavenly altar yet. Now, the sequence, that's not clear to us, but he didn't want to be touched, not because he was too holy to be touched, but he, hadn't, he was in the process of offering himself. And he fulfilled the law, by the way. He, he, he was a perfect sacrifice without blemish. Amen. So if you touch the sacrifice with your sinful hand, yeah. Yeah. That, that, goes against, that goes against the principle. Right. 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 So Jesus did all this. I mean, the Bible says a lot about this. He, he, per, he became perfect. He became complete. He fulfilled all the purpose of God that would qualify him to save not just a few people, but save everyone. And to save us, as we'll see in a moment, to the uttermost. Say uttermost. <laughs> okay. Now, we said again, religious things are done over and over again because it's never finished. Just like the priests who had to make the same sacrifice again and again. Watch this, Hebrews 7, 24. But he, but Jesus, because he continues forever has an unchangeable priesthood, therefore he's also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. So that, you know how it is, we've all had experience of trying to get some help, talk to somebody, and, uh, and just, it comes up short, you know, 
Because nobody can save to the uttermost. You know, they can give you a little bit here, a little bit there. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes folk know enough just to be dangerous. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you go to, you're talking to too many people about stuff. Amen. You got bits and pieces of all kind of advice. And it, 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 it amounts, you know, zero times zero equals, zero times anything equals what? Zero. What's zero times zero? zero. What's zero times 12? Zero. What's zero times one million? Zero. So you get involved with zero situation, you, you come out with nothing. But the Bible says that Jesus has an unchangeable priesthood. He's able to say to the uttermost, here's qualification, those who come to God through him. Now, I do believe in getting help and advice from expert people. That's important. But don't forsake going to Jesus. Don't take everything. He knows finance. He knows relationship. He knows marriage. He was never married, but he knows marriage. He, he made your married spouse. Well, he ain't right. Well, Jesus made him. He can fix him. And he may fix you first. Because oftentimes when you change, everybody gets better. How's that? What's up with that? How's that work? When I change, everybody, everybody's better now. Let it sink in. But Jesus saves to the uttermost those who come to God through him. That's why we, we do pray. We do seek him. We don't do so in a religious way, in a rote way knowledge way we do so in a relational way you know wife and I we have date night almost every Friday and we agonize over where we're going to go you know weeks ago we work it out we go somewhere and, and sometimes someplace new because new places are risky you know what I'm talking about they say it was good I don't know we'll see and if it's bad you wasted your whole evening you know what I'm saying but point is we we do this and not Sometimes we just stay home, watch a movie. The point is, you know, we're not religious with our relationship, right? We, we put thought into what we do. We put thought into that. We put feeling into it. We, we're creative with that. Uh, and that's, with God, to me, it's very important to be the same way. It's a relationship. We're not robots. We're not puppets on strings. We're his children, his people. We're heirs, joint heirs with Christ. So we get to participate with him. And so in that relationship, we find he, can, he breaks that, those cycles of doing things again and again. Number two, second thing Jesus finished, he finished access to God the Father. Let me move along here. Ephesians 2, 12. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now Christ Jesus, but now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Wow. So all the religious deeds could never bring one near to God without Christ. We were all without Christ. Aliens, he said, from Israel, Strangers from covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's a bad place to be, y'all. No hope without God. I got my friends. I got, I got a Mercedes Benz. I got a big house. Yeah, but you're without God, without hope in the world. See, So there's no, no replacing that provision. So Jesus finished access to God, the Father. Say, say thank you, Jesus. For finishing, access for finishing access to the Father God. The Father God. Amen. Number three, Jesus finished the endless cycle of guilt and condemnation. This is important. Yeah. All of us have had bouts with guilt and, condemn and self-condemnation. Now, think about guilt. All guilt isn't bad. What did I say? If I do something wrong, I need to feel guilty about that. That's, that's normal, right? But what's, what's wrong is to have even done wrong, to have asked for forgiveness, been forgiven, and still feeling guilty. Now, that's, that's where the devil is in there 
stirring that thing up in you. Now look at Romans chapter 8. In fact, if you can't see it on the screen, read with me. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, you should read that multiple times. I'll just say this. I, read it 20 times at home. Read it. Now, read it not to be religious, but to, but to absorb what he said there. There is so much freedom in these words. So much liberty in those words. There is no condemnation. So if you feel condemned about something, or if somebody wants to put that on you, that's a big problem, by the way. Amen. People hanging condemnation on you, making you feel bad about something. But when you're in Christ, you have, you've handled the guilt, you've handled the sin, you, the misdeed, you've, Lord, forgive me. But th listen, the thing about saying, Lord, forgive me is, it doesn't change your feelings. The thing about repenting of, of sin or something wrong, it doesn't change how you feel right away. It doesn't. So that's where we go into the presence of God. That's the cleansing part. See, there is the forgiving and the cleansing. And the cleansing isn't just like washing sin, dirt off you. The cleansing is in your consciousness. It's in your mind. God wants your mind free from the burden of what went wrong. Amen, somebody? Please hear that. He says, we don't walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So I cannot... We don't want to just get free and forgiven and, and all that and then go right back to walking the same old way. The point is to change direction. Repent literally means to change directions. Repent means go the other way. So once we've had God forgive us and, and lift that condemnation sense and guilt off of us, then from there we then walk according to the Spirit. Here's the, here's, here's the power that makes it possible. The law of the Spirit of life. Say it, the law of the, law of the Spirit of life. Spirit. Not law like law of Moses, but law of principle like gravity, okay? It's a principle. There is a law principle of the Spirit of life in Christ. And it makes me free from the law or principle of sin and death. When we walk with the resurrected Savior, only life comes out of him. Listen, y'all, Jesus, he's full of power. We see in the Bible where a woman just touched his garment in faith, and virtue went out of him, and she felt she was healed. Right? Remember that? So there's just power emanating from Jesus Christ, power. I mean, then and now, Amen. just power, spirit. The spirit of life, the spirit of life, the spirit, say the spirit of life. The spirit of life is constantly just emanating from or shining from or proceeding from, from Christ. That's why when you worship him, see, when you pray and get in his presence, that spirit of life just gets on you. That's why we always come away from prayer time and worship time. We just feel better. We've been in God's presence. All right, now, here's the next point. But, say but, but, all of this depends on the resurrection of Jesus. That's why we just only, we don't preach about his death. We preach also resurrection. In the book of Acts, it's often said that they preached the resurrection of Jesus. So it's not really, you know, <laughs> Isn't the whole story to say he died and fix it on his death? Of course he died. The death is what took all the sin and the guilt and the, and the, uh, you know, the, the poor character all went down in his death. But then again, because he rose, everything became possible. Final scripture, 1 Corinthians 15. He says, the Apostle Paul wrote, Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? And that was being said. But I think the, I think the Sadducees said that. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen, 
And if Christ is not risen, watch this, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. So we emphasize resurrection because the same Jesus who gave himself to be abused and punished and, 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 and lied and scorned on, put a throne of crown, a throne of, uh, crown of thrones on his head and, and all this, uh, all he went through and, and then died and, and buried. But the resurrection, the resurrection ratified all the promises he ever made, but also he gained authority over death itself. Now, listen, y'all, you know, having, having, having your money funny and, and uh, you know, uh, things at home are kind of rocky sometimes and the job is a little squirrely, but, hey, being dead is worse, all right? So <laughs> you've been redeemed from the worst part to have some hope for everything else, amen? And so, like one person said, if it don't kill you, it'll make you stronger, right? And it's important to recognize that this invite Jesus into whatever situation you're dealing with. Because, again, you can say it's done when you know Jesus has finished it. Now, I got a question for you. Here's the question. I want you to answer this question. Because Jesus said it is finished and brought everything to completion, what do you need to call done? Think about that. Think about your life, your family, situation, you're facing right now that, you know, is, is a, a problem. But because Jesus said it's finished and brought everything, that includes salvation, healing, encouragement, blessing and prosperity, I believe it's part of the covenant, uh, you know, getting over, getting past condemnation, self-condemnation. Because he said it's finished, and brought everything to completion. What do you need to call done? Amen. And I recognize, I mentioned, you know, that the thing with the debt, uh, that's, that's done. You know, that's been done for a little bit. Other things I, re I realize uh, are, will be done. I can, I'll be able to describe it as done. Because Jesus finished the process by which it becomes possible. Amen. I see uh, the younger Galen Owens back there, and he's getting ready to finish yeah. college. Yeah. <laughs> getting ready to finish. <laughs> you know, and that last thing you do in school, that's a great thing. The last, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is, a test or, or if it's a paper or something, uh, when you know you, you, you turn it in and you, you walk away from it or step back from the computer, however you submit that thing, Man, that's a good feeling, isn't it? And that's, that's what it's like to know that Jesus has finished all the hard and heavy lifting. See, we can come in and, and, and do our part. Now, we have a part to do, but our part is working inside of the provision. Amen? Hey, if somebody give me a whole bunch of money, say if somebody, here it is, we all got our stimulus checks, you know. We got stimulus, you know, look, there's the stimulus up in there, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to go buy something. That's the point, you know, I want you to, you know, buy, spend it for the economy's sake. But, um, but it's nice, you know, that, uh, you know, you go, you go and you go to your bank account and you want to just, you know, buy something or pay a bill, whatever it is, and you can do that because there's something extra in there that wasn't there before, you know what I'm saying? And so but how much more do the promises of God and the blessing of God, the favor of God, relationship with God, how much more uh, can you sense the completion of what Jesus Christ has done? So whatever he tells you to do, you can do it. You know, when God calls us to do ministry work or go into the juvenile center or outreaches or go to Africa, uh, those, are, those are big things to do. And, and, and so, but when you agree to do something, you got to know it's done. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you know, you, you, you can't just tag along to Africa. You know what I'm saying? You can, can I go and tag along with you? No, you can't tag along because we're into a finished work over here. And you haven't finished other stuff God told you to do. 
to qualify you to go over there. The point is, just keep, keep doing what God said, knowing it's finished, the provision has been made. Even if you think that it's hard, I can't see my way clear, I know the feeling, um, but just get past the feeling and, and take the knowledge that says, Jesus, you finished this. You have brought this to completion. I don't see all of what you've done, but I know you've done it. I know it's done. I know that, Lord, I can say it's done because you finished. And going back to my, my first thought there, when I woke up and heard the words, it is done, I knew that. Those are not words to describe what Jesus said. Those are words for me to learn to say, right? To learn to say, it is done. To get in position, having walked with Christ and, you know, feasting on the word and receiving help. However God's going to do the process, finish it for me to be able to say, okay, that's done. Amen? So I'll stand. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word today, Lord. Thank you for all the words.